Hello everyone, welcome to the next episode on Anubhav Learning Series. In this episode of Anubhav Learning Series, we will talk about how to bind images which are exposed as a byte stream from a SAP Gateway system to a Fiori application. In this episode, we will not look at how to build the service. That is something which we have already seen in the past class. But our main focus is will be to bind this image from the dollar value parameter of the OData service. Just to take a look at our architecture once again. So we have an SAP backend OData service exposed via the NetWeaver gateway system. And this expose an image object out of REST protocol using OData. And on the front end side, we will be creating a Fury application, which will be a master detail Fury app. And in that application, we will showcase how to display the product information. And when users select a particular product, the corresponding image of that product will be displayed to the user in the details section. So with that scenario, let's quickly have a look at our OData service, which we had already created in the last episode of Anubo Learning Series. So I'll switch right away to our gateway system. So this is where we've created ZDemo SAP OData service. And as you can see here, I have a product entity type, which is marked as a media. This represents that our entity set will probably be exposing a media type. And in order to see the data of images from coming out of this service, I will switch to the browser. And you can see I'm already running the, the application here into the browser with this OData service. And I'll probably hit one of the product. So just type here uh, product set and pass the key of the product. And this will show me that one exact record of the product. At the same time, uh, now it's possible since it's a media entity, it's possible to access the Octane stream, which is exposed as a byte stream from the, from the images which are stored in the gateway system. So for that, I should just go back on the top, put slash dollar value and press enter. And this will then showcase the image which is stored in the SAP system. Awesome. Now, how can we bring this data or bring this image in a Fury application? And how can we do or also perform the binding? So what I expect at the end of this session is something of this sort. So where you have an application and you have list of products on the left side. And whenever you click on a particular product, you would see that on the right side, the product image is getting displayed. So that's our use case we want to uh, we want to achieve. So you can see it's showcasing the the particular product image on the right hand side. As in, when we click on a particular product, it's uh, sh it's going to show you the image of that that product. If there is no image, then of course it doesn't change the image out here. So that's the result, ultimate result we want to see into the output. So let's go ahead and create our our Fury application. So I will start from the scratch. Don't worry, you can download the complete source code of this Fury application uh, with the link given in the description of the video. And uh, then you can also try the same in your company system with the same similar scenario. Now I come back and remember the service name is this one. I just make a copy of this and we'll start creating a application. So I go ahead with an application creation for the template, master detail Fury application, say next, and we'll give some project names, the Anubhav images, and then we'll give my first image application, ats.image, and I will say anubhavtrainings.com. All right, let's say next. And it's time to select our data source. Of course, we'll choose our S4 HANA server where the service is already been deployed and active. And we just give our service name and say select. We go for next. So you can see system has already now selected our uh, product set entity set and it's also selecting the key. And maybe just choose the, the title as maybe the product name. So our product ID, and then we'll also choose numeric attribute as the price, and also the measure as currency code. In addition, you can also use the associations, which we have already in place 
we can actually do that but i don't want to do all that i just simply want to say finish and generate the basic app out of the box over here so this is the app which is now created by the system by the web ide tool and we can just go ahead and test this application to see the product data out there you can also go back to the manifest json and check the entry out here for our o data service which is which is connect double click on manifest json and now you can see our service mapping here in the main service data source section so it's time to go ahead and execute the application so let's go ahead and run I may be closing other instances of the other applications so it will not confuse us. So now when I execute, you can see it's trying to make a call to our backend service which we had provided and it should load all the product data. Wow, simple and easy. And now it's as part of next step, what we want to do here exactly is we want to show the image over here for the selected product. Now, a couple of important things here. If you're willing to achieve such scenarios or such examples, it's extremely important that you're comfortable with the concepts of component JS manifest and routing configuration. Because router is one of the major concept which is responsible for loading the data on the right hand side. So considering all of that as a as a prerequisite, I would not get into detail of routing and routing configuration with the route match handler. All of these are covered in our UI5 and Fiori training module in detail. But I will straight away go ahead and explain what exactly, how do we get the images here now. So those who have already subscribed my training, they, it will be comfortable for them to actually understand the routing and route match handle and they can easily go ahead and do this step. So I will go to the views and let's go to the detail view. And this is where exactly now I want to include just below our object header, uh, another content in the uh, in the first icon tab filter called image. So I will just add an image control from SAP UI5 library. And let's give an ID to this image. I will say my IMG. And we can have some width property defined for this image, maybe uh, 300 or uh, yeah, 300 pixel is good. And let's also give a height property defined as 300 pixels. So this is the placeholder where the image is going to come, okay? This is the exact placeholder where the image is going to come. Now, what we do going to do next step is we're going to bind this, this particular image control at runtime with the with a dollar value. And how's, how does that binding will happen? So that binding will have three important components. Uh, maybe I will just go straight away to the detail controller when the root match handler triggers. We'll go to that particular part. So this is the init function and this is where you can see the root match handler is triggering. Let's go to the root match handler. And here is where now I need a couple of important things to do the binding. So basically what we want to do now is to bind with our, uh, the bind the address of the image which is coming from the OData service. I showed you about a minute ago that when you can go to dollar slash value, you will get actually um the image data out so this whole service is divided into multiple parts if you come back and bring it here this is the exact binding which i need to do at runtime now at runtime what will happen user may choose any product id so user may choose ht10000 or user may choose ht1000 or or user may choose ht2020 anything user can choose so at that point of time, I need to make sure that this product set part uh, should be uh, should be dynamic based on the selection done by the user. And then this particular part of the service, as you can see, is exactly coming from the manifest. Yeah. Yet still, I am not willing to hard code this. That's not a good practice to hard code this part, because if you hard code this tomorrow, for example, your service changes then you again have to make sure that all the places wherever you use this hard-coded path also should change. That's the best practice. So we never hard-code this part. So yet still we need these following parts. So the first part which we need is the service information, which is which can be retrieved at runtime from the manifest JSON. The second information I would need is this gentleman, which is the address or, or, or the path of the product, which you already can see above here the s object path is exactly the same thing which it is giving you 
so we can actually use that as object path instead of using this so this thing will transform into something like s object path and this thing will transform into a special code which i will be writing so basically now i will read the component js object uh, and then from the component js object i will reach to the manifest and then from there i will reach to the section where my service address is kept if you observe in the manifest the service is kept in sap up section so we have to reach to sap up section and then data source main service and this is where uri parameter will give me uh, the exact uh, path prefix of the odata service which we are which we are using so this is the information i will also read at runtime and this part we can hard code because it's always going to be dollar value so that's how overall my binding uh, path will be built so let's go ahead and do that so i'm going to right now command this and we will for time being just to, for testing purpose hard code this address and see if it works so we'll take my img and now over here i'll say this dot uh, get view get me the view object get me the control object and then just set the address uh, basically bind the source of the image to that control so that's what we exactly have to do now so we have to bind the address of that image to the to this uh, to the src property of this of this image control all right so that's what we have to do so that is very very easy to perform so let's go ahead and do we call set src so src is the source property of the image uh, so we are just informing the image control that your source now is something else this is where you have to pick the image from and that source is right now just hard code remember i'm just hard coding for time being for just testing purpose to see on selection of any product does my image getting displayed or not of course we will have to do later on the other stuff so let's do step by step line by line as we always do in our programs um, so when i come back and reload the application so we should see uh, ideally if everything goes good then we should see an image uh, based on that hard coded product id should display up on the on the right hand side so that's what we should now see and yep the application loads with the data and you can see uh, now due to this binding our image is popping up nicely into the into the into the details section in the icon tab filter but uh, hey what happening is now i choose different products over here and literally there's no change in the image because um, of course I have to now do the dynamic binding based on the product ID which I choose on the left side. Right now, you all know that we've hard coded here everything. Of course, it reads it reads always the same image and displays that. So this is something which now needs to be changed. So the first part, as I was mentioning you, we got to read at runtime from the manifest.json. So for that, I would like to quickly take you to the debugging because that's the best place you can you can actually build your code at runtime. You can debug it completely on the browser side. It's a client side JavaScript. That's the biggest benefit you get out of it. So now I just quickly refresh over here to just go to the root mesh handler debugging and then see is there any way I can somehow read the manifest information from the from the object. So we have this as our current controller object, the detail controller we are into. So we use this dot get owner component that will give us the um, uh, that will give us the object of the component.js then we will call dot get manifest object and this will give you the manifest object then we call get entry and you all know that sap odata service is maintained in the manifest under sap up section so sap up section data source main service uri that's what we have to refer now so just go back and say sap.app section please get me that so it gets you the complete sap app section information now under that you have data sources mean service uri so let's get that dot data sources mean service dot uri so this is the part you can read at runtime from the manifest in your component or from your component or js object directly so this part of hard coding bye bye i just say bye bye to this code and we just put this piece of code and now do a plus concatenate 
Now the second piece of the code, uh, the third piece of the code of course remains a fixed constant. So I'm just going to put that constant over here. And this, the middle piece of the code now, this guy is, you can see this object path here. So that's exactly giving you the product set of HD1000 or HD1010 whatsoever. So that I will pass it here, the object path. So whenever you select, um, whenever you're selecting a particular product, system is um, is actually passing you the product ID. You see this object ID contains the product ID which was selected. And based on that, we are here constructing, in fact, this is a generated code due to root match handler. System is creating the address of that particular product set with the parentheses of its ID. So now this is complete. So now let's go back and check this in action. I'm gonna save this. Uh, we can, can remove the debugger for now. And we can go ahead and test this application. Now I'll go back and maybe just close everything. Just go on the top, remove all this product stuff, and just reload the app from scratch. So just refresh and reload the app from scratch. So our code gets loaded. And then now we should be able to see the images getting displayed dynamically. So that's what we want to see. Yes, you can see the product image HT1000 is getting displayed over here. If I scroll down a little bit below, I select a different product and now the image doesn't come because maybe there's no image in the system. And now you can see I select a different product. It shows me the, the printer image and uh, maybe I just choose HT1060, uh, 66. You see there were some keyboard out there and based on the selection, it will now trigger the logic to load the image at runtime. So you're not loading all the images at the beginning, rather you are loading the images on demand as and when user is selecting, you're, you're calling the byte stream, due to that binding, the byte stream gets invoked and it loads uh, the correct product image automatically at front of you. Cool, isn't it? So, so now I think you know how to bind directly the dollar value with your with your UI5 application so that byte stream can be fetched automatically and displayed as a image to the end user. So with that, uh, thank you so much for attending. Don't forget to subscribe this channel and uh, feel free to hit the bell icon. And you can also subscribe our courses on anuboutrainings.com. It will be a great help for you to understand the core concepts of SAP UI5. Feel free to drop your questions into the video below and I will be happy to answer all those questions. With that, Anubhav signing out. Thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you in the next video.